This introductory video explains how Marobus maneuver may facilitate the relief of shoulder dystocia and highlights that a proper execution of the maneuver is evidenced by resulting in the maternal buttocks being lifted up. The optimal way to perform a Marobus maneuver is also demonstrated in this video. Although the Marobus maneuver is commonly used as the first maneuver to relieve shoulder dystocia, the mechanism behind the resolution of the dystocia by it remains unknown. A radiological study showed that hyperflexion of the maternal hips does not increase the pelvic dimension, but rotates the pelvis in Sevillard's direction and straightens the lumbar sacral lordosis. As a result, the lateral traction force required to deliver the anterior shoulder may be reduced. If one believes perfect rotation is the mechanism, then one must ensure that the maternal buttocks are lifted up when hyperflexing the hips. Hence, one must understand clearly that hyperflexion of the hips is the method, but not the aim of the maneuver, which is perfect rotation. There are three issues concerning the optimal execution of the Marabas maneuver. Firstly, Marabas maneuver is commonly illustrated in textbooks or websites as holding the women's feet and knees and pushing the leg in Sevillard direction. However, such moves are less effective in hyperflexing the hips and rotating the pelvis because the ankle and knee joints are mobile. We recommend to directly control the hip joint by firstly stabilizing the leg by holding the knee joint and hyperflex the thigh by pushing the back of it towards the maternal head. One can also lean towards the mother and use his or her weight to augment the hip hyperflexion. Perfect rotation is evidenced by seeing the buttocks being lifted up as a result of the maneuver. The second issue is that Marobus maneuver is often mistaken as a purely maternal manipulation, but indeed, feet retraction is still required to deliver the anterior shoulder. The controversy is whether the direction of traction should be lateral or axial. The British guideline recommends axial direction to deliver the anterior shoulder, while the French guideline recommends traction in the umbilical costigial axis. The American guideline recommends axial traction, but also with a downward component, typically along a vector estimated to be 25 to 45 degrees below the horizontal plane. Even if the lateral force required to deliver the anterior shoulder is reduced by putting the patient in the marobus position, it does not prohibit the use of excessive force which may cause brachial plexus injury. This is the reason why the British adopt axial traction. However, while axial traction may avoid injuring the brachial plexus, it may injure the spinal cord instead. It is probably the reason why the French and the American adopt a compromise approach with an oblique downward traction. It is important to highlight that we do not recommend axial traction either. Regardless which direction is adopted, only normal traction force should be used. If it fails, one should not persist in doing so, but immediately switch to other maneuvers. Lastly, let's discuss about suprapubic pressure. As both suprapubic pressure and Marobus maneuvers are regarded as external maneuvers, they are often carried out simultaneously as depicted in this commonly found figure. Suprapubic pressure aims at disimpacting the anterior shoulder from the pubis, which as a result facilitates fetal neck traction in delivering the anterior shoulder. However, as the direction of suprapubic pressure is downward, it may counteract the upward pelvic rotation resulted from the Marobus maneuver. On the other hand, Suprapubic pressure, in effect, is an external method of rotation of the anterior shoulder. Hence, it can be synchronized with internal rotation maneuver on the opposite side to achieve optimal torque effect. We will discuss this further in our video on rotation and maneuvers. In summary, the actual mechanism of Marobot's maneuver to resolve shoulder dystocia remains unknown. It may be related to the perfect self large rotation and the straightening of the lumbar sacral spine. Hip hyperflexion is a method to change perfect orientation, and effective marobus should result in the maternal buttocks being lifted up. An effective way to hyperflex the hips is pushing at the back of the thighs. We can also lean towards the mother 
and use our weight to amend hip hyperflexion. Moreover's maneuver is not simply about maternal repositioning. Feet retraction is also required to deliver the anterior shoulder. Excessive force may still injure the brachial plexus or spinal cord. Suprapubic pressure aims to rotate the anterior shoulder externally, but it may counteract the upward pelvic movement by the McRoberts maneuver. On the other hand, suprapubic pressure can be synchronized with internal rotation maneuver on the opposite side to achieve optimal torque effect. Thanks for watching. To learn more about the technique and management of emergency obstetrics, please visit our Sylvie website.